Cider, Applejack, cider again. It's time for some apple brandy. Come on, Tim up! Lingo! I just said, yes, man. So what is apple brandy? Really simple, you make apple wine or apple cider and then run it through a pot still. That's it. So let's do that. This is the juice that we're using. Your grocery store probably has a store brand. Check it out to make sure uh, on the label that it doesn't have anything like sodium metabisulfate or potassium sorbate. It can have ascorbic acid, but that's all. Anything else is probably going to really mess with your fermentation or stop it altogether. This has enough sugar in it to get it up to about 6% alcohol. We want to make it a little stronger than that because when you're distilling, you want a little more alcohol so you have a better volume. We're going to add some sugar to our juice the way we did in the breakfast cereal vodka video. We're gonna use invert sugar. If you haven't seen the vodka video, I'll uh, put a link for that one right up there. Invert sugar is sugar and a little bit of acid boiled in water so it's easier for the yeast to process it and eat it. If you've never made invert sugar, here's a quick little demonstration. Since our apple juice has enough sugar to get us about 6% alcohol, I only want to raise the gravity of this wash up to around 8%. All you need to do is weigh out two pounds of table sugar, add that to one quart of water, one fourth teaspoon of citric acid available near the canning supplies in your local grocery store, or you can use a tablespoon of fresh lemon juice. Stir to dissolve the sugar completely and then simmer for at least 20 minutes. That's it. Now that we have that sorted, Let's jump right into making the hard cider. We need to take a hydrometer reading of the juice to find the starting gravity so we know how much sugar to add. Add the yeast nutrient and invert sugar to your sanitized bucket. Then top it up with your juice. Take a new hydrometer reading to make sure you're on target. Then add the yeast of your choice and lock it up. So in four or five days when this is done, then we will distill it and find out what we get. A few moments later. All right, so now the apple brandy is done. Fermentation finished out bone dry. So then we got everything ready. Then there was a stripping run, then a spirit run, then I did a blending. And the blending, I actually did it right this time, diluted everything, tasted it to uh, find where all the flavors were, and then put it all together and proofed it down to about 42%. So what did we get after all of that? Basically, I ended up getting exactly what George and Jesse predicted back in October when I met with them and we were sampling a cherry apple cider that I made. I had asked George if there was a way to bring the really cool fruit flavors in that cider into a distillate and basically the answer was not really. What you'll have is you'll wind up with a really good spirit that doesn't necessarily taste like cherries. Right. But it has a it has that cherry Tastes character like to it. Yeah. Walked by it with some cherries. Right. And you know, I had I had that suspicion going in, but I I have to test everything myself to see if uh, I can, you know, beat the odds or whatever. We got something that is, it's a nice clean spirit that is reminiscent of apples. I hate that George and Jesse were right, but also I love that that they were because it confirms to me how good it is to have um, all these different experienced voices in our community so that we can all learn from each other. I posted a poll on my Patreon page to see what everybody suggested as far as the wood that we're gonna age this stuff with because it is a nice clean spirit and it does have some fruit character to it. So we wanna age it up nice and get something really cool. We're gonna do some toasted French oak and cherry, some charred white oak and birch, some maple and some mulberry. We got two that have fruit trees in there and we're gonna see if we can get some of that fruit tree character to kind of bump this up a little bit. But we have one more jar. A couple of you guys and a couple of my patrons actually suggested doing an apple pie moonshine with the apple brandy. And honestly, I can't think of a better thing to do with this. 
So uh, we're gonna do a quick little recipe on this one and get these guys aged up. Complicated, right? So now we'll just let these guys sit for, I don't know, what do you think, Thanksgiving-ish? That sounds good. There's a whole bunch of different apple pie moonshine recipes. So we're not reinventing the wheel here, but I think um, because we're using an apple-based moonshine, it's gonna be even better. And uh, I'm pretty excited about that. All we need is some apple juice concentrate, a jar of apple brandy, one sliced apple, some spices, and fresh ginger. Slice your apple and put that in a large jar, then add the brandy. Take one thick slice of ginger and bruise it with the back of your knife like this. Add 1 8 teaspoon of nutmeg to your pot, just a tiny sprinkle of cloves because they're really strong. Add two cinnamon sticks, your apple juice concentrate, and ginger slice. Then heat it just barely to a simmer and turn off the heat. Let it cool for 20 minutes, then strain into your jar. And you're done. All right, so now we're done. We got these all dosed up with their wood and we've got our apple pie. I'm calling this double apple pie because it's apple brandy instead of regular old like corn whiskey or, or a neutral wash. I can't taste these yet. They're not gonna be ready for a couple of months. So we're gonna let these go until November, but I can taste this one now and I have to say I'm a little bit excited about it. Holy crap, that's good. <laughs> oh shit. That is good. Oh man, I, I don't know if this is gonna make it until Thanksgiving. Oh my God, that is so good. Keep in mind, I didn't add any sugar to this. It was all just the apple juice concentrate. Now, if you are in a place that does not sell apple juice concentrate in the little frozen cans, it's easy to make. You take 48 ounces of juice. You just simmer that down until it's about 12 ounces of juice. So all you're doing is reducing the water volume by about 75% and making a juice syrup or a concentrate. And that will work perfectly well for something like this. I did the same thing with making the uh, cherry cider. So if you need a visual reference on that, I'll go ahead and put a link right up there. If you want to use a higher proof, go right ahead because you will be diluting it with that apple juice concentrate. Some recipes recommend as high as 70%. I don't know that I would go that high, maybe 50 or 55%. And I think you would still end up with something that's really tasty and has a uh, substantial kick to it. One other thing about this stuff, a lot of people recommend that you keep it in the fridge. Technically, I think the alcohol content is way high enough for it to not spoil. But as far as keeping the flavor consistent, the refrigerator is always a good way to go. I wanna thank my patrons, Uncle Duck, thank you for suggesting doing apple pie, and all of you guys, thanks for voting on the types of wood that we tried, because I took a little sniffy of each of these, and they all smell really promising, like they're gonna be worth the wait. Thank you guys for voting on that. If you would like to also contribute to decisions like this, uh, recipe ideas, things like that, you can consider joining my Patreon. I'll put a link down below. I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to you guys. I am now in a much better position to keep doing these weekly videos because of you guys. So thank you so very much. This is, it's kind of blowing me away. All right, so moving on. I think that's all we can say about this stuff. I am really excited. Man, I'm gonna have to hide this from myself or get my wife to hide it from me. Holy crap. I want to save the rest of this so that I can see if the flavor changes over time uh, along with the, uh, the wood aging. Wow. Might have to have one more sip of that. <laughs> so, okay. you got to be my guinea pig <laughs> and give this a taste. <laughs> That's the face. This is good. This is good. <laughs> she does not like spirits at all. Double apple pie moonshine for the win. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Give it back. I guess we could just drink it all if you want to. That's cool with me because I'm in love with it. Applejack <laughs> was my favorite, but now that's my favorite. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You heard it here first. So if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button because it really helps out the channel. If you're new to this channel and you, this is the first time you're seeing me do stuff, 
If you'd like to follow along and find out what kind of weird crap I'm going to get up to next time, go down and hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon right next to it so you can get notified when I post new content. If you have any suggestions on how to make the ultimate brandy that explodes with flavor right out of the pipe, let me know down in the comments section. I am really, really interested in testing out as many different suggestions as you guys come up with. So thanks so much for watching. I'll talk at you later.